Hello and welcome! This is a video guide on how to optimize and boost the FPS for the recently released Hogwarts Legacy, which gives us yet another wonderful chapter in the Harry Potter saga. I'd like to point out this guide will most definitely be helpful for high-end systems, but it will boost mid-range and low-end gaming PC systems with a higher degree of effectiveness. The guide will not only show you how to boost the FPS, but it will also improve your game's overall quality and your system's performance. In turn, this will help fix any lag or FPS drops or stutters that you could be experiencing while you play. First and foremost though, we will go over the very best tips, tricks and settings for gaming on Windows step by step. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Step 1. Clean out your shader cache. I cannot stress enough how important this is. This basically cleanses and resets your stored shaders, which are basically tones and textures that your installed games save. Every time there's a new update, more are added on. Shader compiling can cause crashes, stutters, freezes, and even overheating in some cases. It uses extra memory too. Resetting your shader cache should always be the first thing you do before installing a new game. Or when a new update comes along. Now there's a link in the description for a video that will show you two simple ways on how to easily clean and reset your shader cache. Step 2. To ensure you get the most out of your PC whilst you game, I highly advise that you switch off every overlay and background application while you play. Things like Steam, Nvidia GeForce, Xbox Game Bar, Discord, even River Tuner, and any others that could affect the performance while you game. This is mostly for players with low and gaming systems that need all the power they can get, basically. To turn the Steam overlay off, just head into the Steam setting menu, click in-game and untick the box that says enable the Steam overlay while in-game. To turn off the NVIDIA GeForce overlay, open up NVIDIA GeForce Experience, click on the settings icon, go to general and switch off the in-game overlay. For Xbox Game Bar, using the window search bar, type game mode settings and then click the icon. Once the window is open, navigate to the left side and click Xbox Game Bar. And of course, set it off. Then you navigate back to the left and click on Captures, where you then need to switch off background recording and recorded audio. For Discord, all you need to do is open Settings and on the left select Overlay. You'll then just need to disable the option that says Enable In-Game Overlay. After you've done that, navigate to Advanced and make sure Hardware Acceleration is set to Off as this actually uses GPU power to run Discord. Step 3. In the Windows search bar, type in Game Mode and click the settings icon. Once the window pops up, ensure Game Mode is set to On. For quite some time, there were issues with this particular setting, but Microsoft has now finally fixed it. So basically, if you're running the very latest version of Windows 10, make sure you turn Game Mode On. This will force all your PC resources on the game you're playing and suppresses any background activity from affecting your system while you game. Step number four. Navigate back to Windows search bar, type in graphics settings and click the icon. Now in here, you should see an option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. This needs to be set to on. And if it wasn't, you will need to restart your PC after you turn it on. Once that's done, navigate down to graphics performance preference and you will want to add Hogwarts Legacy to your graphics performance list in order to get the most out of your game. For you to do this, you will need to know exactly where your game is installed within your drive. And what you'll need to do is add the game's launch application to this list. You'll just need to click on browse, then head over to the location where your game is installed, and then simply find the launch application icon, in this case for Hogwarts Legacy, and you add it to your graphics list. Finally, all you need to do is click on options, set it to high performance, click save, and that's it, you're done. Step five. Go back to the Windows search bar once again, type in Power Plan and click Edit Power Plan. At the very top, click Power Options and under Preferred Plans, ensure High Performance is selected. 
Step six, if you have multiple screens, I would advise to only have one screen on when you play. If you press the Windows key and P together, you will bring up a menu that lets you select which screens to have on. Step seven, background apps. Simply type settings into Windows search bar and click the icon, then select privacy. On the left menu, scroll down all the way until you see background apps. Then simply switch off, let apps run in the background. Step eight, the Windows Registry Edit. Now this step may look a little daunting, but it really isn't, I promise. Just follow along and you're gonna be 100% just fine. First, just head on over to the Windows search bar. Type in run and hit enter. Once the new window opens up, simply type in reg edit as you see on screen and hit enter once again. You're now inside the Windows registry editor. In here, we're going to optimize and tweak a couple of values that will set important Windows registry keys to completely prioritize prioritize gaming above all else. This includes your CPU resources. So start off by double clicking H key local machine, then double click software, then find the Microsoft folder and once again double click it. Then scroll down until you find Windows NT and you guessed it, double click that. Then double click the current version folder and finally scroll down until you find the multimedia folder and double click that one. You'll now be seeing a folder called system profile and I want you to just click that one once. Now to the right, you will see two options inside. One is titled network throttling index and the other is titled system responsiveness. Starting with network throttling, I want you to double click it and delete any any value you see in there and then you proceed to type in eight F's as in F F F F F F F F and this will actually disable network throttling completely, which is extremely beneficial for gaming. Now, once that's done, click OK and exit. Next up, double click on system responsiveness and change the value to zero. This will actually ensure all your CPU resources go towards gaming. And once you've edited the values inside these two registries, head back over to the left and double click on system profile. Then double click on tasks and then click the games folder just once. Head over to the right and double click on GPU priority and set the value data to eight. You then click OK. Next up, double click priority and change the value to six and click OK. Finally, double click on scheduling category and change the value data to high if it wasn't already and click on OK. You have now successfully optimized the Windows registry for gaming. Step number nine, clearing out your temp folder. This is a pretty simple step and it will clear away a huge amount of unnecessary dumped files that are just simply cluttering your machine. Firstly, head down to the Windows search bar and type in percent app data percent and hit enter. Once the window pops up, you will need to ensure that your hidden items are actually showing as this is a hidden folder. To do that, all you need to do is click on view at the top and then tick the box to the right that says hidden items. Once you've done that, click app data on the address bar and you will see a sort of transparent folder called local. Double click on it and then scroll all the way down until you find another transparent folder that's called temp. Once inside here, you'll want to click and drag your mouse to highlight every single file inside the folder. Then just right click on your mouse and select delete. A window will pop up and what you simply need to do is tick the box that says do this for all current items and then click skip and keep doing the same until the process is finished and you're only actually left with the files that are actually being used by your machine inside the folder. Okay, so now we're gonna dive into the game and we're gonna change a couple of things. Now, with pretty much any game, we can just put everything on low and that would be just fine. You'd probably get smooth performance, but the visual quality would most likely be poor and unbalanced. The whole point, of course, is to try and maintain as high a graphical quality as we can whilst squeezing out the very most amount of FPS. So to try and achieve the right balance between quality and high frame rate. And that's exactly what we aim to try and do with this guide. Of course, the settings will really depend on your PC, so you'll definitely need to play around to see what works best for your own system. But here is a guide on what might work best for you. 
First we'll head into the settings and then into display options. For window mode I recommend windowed full screen. Resolution should be your own monitor's native resolution. Now if you have a GPU with DLSS then definitely turn that on and I would highly recommend you use upscale mode as performance or even ultra performance if you're really struggling. But if you do own a high-end card like a 3080 or a 3090 or a 4090 then just stick it on quality. Then further down for Nvidia Reflex Low Latency I suggest it as just on. V-Sync is then up to you. Frame rate, I suggest capping that to either 60 or 120. Then under field of view, you just need to play around with it. I have left mine as the standard default value of zero, but if you are struggling, then narrowing it down will definitely help your game's smoothness and FPS. For the rest of the settings, motion blur, depth of field, chromatic aberration, film grain, I just recommend that you switch them all off. We don't really need them. So next up, let's head into the graphics options tab. For effects quality, medium. Material quality, high. Fog quality, medium. Sky quality, medium. Foliage quality, high. Post process quality, medium. Texture quality, high. And the last two, view distance quality and population quality should be set to medium. And absolutely 100% turn off ray tracing completely unless you're on a very high end machine. So basically I've placed all the options that require a higher power from your CPU on lower settings and, and everything else that needs GPU power on higher settings. And that's really worked for my machine. My game is running really, really well with no stuttering at all. Now, of course, again, these settings do really depend on your PC and your hardware. So you will definitely need to play around, see what works best, for you and your system. I do hope that the guide has helped you in some way or another. If you do have any questions, pop them in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. A goodbye.